Hello, thank you for tuning in to this Back to the City. Today I'm excited to be joined by Matthew Bedrosian um, of People to do lots of talking about a record that has a lot to say about talking. One of the lyrics in Record Breakers, mm -hmm. uh, right at the end, my only advice, keep it concise, say one thing, say you're on my mind. And then there are other moments in the record which reflect on the act of talking or, or saying. My favourite title is IMO TMI, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Too much information. Thank you. I know every word you're going to speak. I don't know what you're saying there. So it seems like there's some skepticism about too much talking. So we've got yeah. to brace ourselves for the talking that we're about to do. <laughs> <laughs> Given the attitude that the record seems to have about talking, mm -hmm. uh, let's begin by focusing on dancing instead. Uh, there was a dance party in our future, but in your past, uh -huh. uh, that hopefully you were at. Is there a specific reason? related to this record, that why it seemed best to have a dance party for the record release as opposed to, to perform. Yeah, actually this project has mostly been a focus for me to write music that's, that's danceable, yeah. that's um, uplifting live instead of, um, I tend to write music that is introspective um, when I let myself mm -hmm. and live it can go well or it can go a little poorly if if the mood's not right and so the whole point is to make danceable music and so to, have to think about the live performance that's interesting that then for the, on this one occasion there is, there isn't a live performance there is not a live but there performance. <laughs> but there will be movement and dancing was that part of the objective to think about like the effect on a person's entire being as opposed to just like the cerebral introspection sure i don't think i thought so much about this show this this dance right. party <laughs> um except that it would be fun and it would um embody the spirit of what uh, I want yeah. music to be about, but total body experience is something that I think a lot of our lives are missing. You said you can be very introspective and you wanted to make something that people could dance to. Mm -hmm. Do you think it remains as introspective as it would otherwise be? It's just also something that we can dance to? I think it, it sneaks in, yeah. yeah. There's some introspection, but I don't think it's burdensome. And no. that, that's a major uh, growth for me, I think. Great. Why is that so important for this record? I notice it's kind of more rhythmic. I love the bass lines throughout. Mm -hmm. Were they the starting point for some songs? Yeah, you have a good ear. Uh, <laughs> they, along with the drums, yeah. were most of the starting points for the songs. Yeah. So for like Record Breakers, for example, mm -hmm. that's got a totally. very prominent bass line. Yeah. Um, that actually started out as um, train rock. Train rock. Yeah. Never, and what is train rock? <laughs> it, what, what's the components of train rock? It sounds like maybe like I've been working on the railroad plus rock. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, and it ended up a lot better. Than, okay, I think. Than, so than you did. you weren't trying to write "I've been working on the railroads" rock, but you found yourself doing so. Yeah. What was the magic ingredient that shifted it? The magic ingredient was subtraction. Okay. Um, I took a lot out mm. and then added a few more things back in, but it was a little clunky and over arranged. Was minimalism a, a guiding principle for some of these songs? It's something I'm, I'm working on in general. Okay. Becoming, becoming more minimalist. Yeah. yeah. Music and otherwise. Yeah, so a lyric that struck me as really relevant mm -hmm. uh, in While We Die. There are, there are very few lyrics in While We Die. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't plan on hiding from the beat that puts the being in my blood. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems a lyric that's kind of indicative of the record as a whole. Beginning with those bass lines and kind of making sure that they remain kind of very prominent and that mm -hmm. it's rhythmic and there's this full body experience. Do you agree that that's kind of indicative of like the ethos of the record? Yeah, I think that while We Die is a good manifesto for that. Yeah. Album. It's simple and that is the point and it's to that point, which is no matter what's going on, there's the opportunity to enjoy and to move and yeah. to dance specifically. Yeah. 
is that like synonymous with living? So to to live yeah. is to experience the beat that puts the being in one's blood. Yeah, the beat is is more literally a heartbeat. The idea is there's there's always this beat. Like we have a beat. We yeah. live because of our beat, our internal beat. Right. And to ignore that both literally by not using our bodies and figuratively by not dancing and enjoying yeah is tragic so there's introspection we're thinking about the meaning of life Mm -hmm. but we're thinking about the meaning of life in this kind of fully embodied way Mm -hmm. when we don't want to prioritize the cerebral yeah sure I and that's that's been a theme in my life is is getting a little too cerebral and a little too uh, compartmentalized in my experience. So given that it's a song about life and what it is to live, mm-hmm. uh, it's interesting that it's called "While We Die." Mm. Could you reflect on that incongruity of it? I think that that came about naturally. I didn't plan on it being ironic or yeah it's not an inten- it's not an intended paradox no it it was lyrics that that came about from from playing with the melody i think myself i i think probably too much about death i think it's probably pretty common and to think a lot about death to think a lot about yeah. death yeah while living yeah and so those opposing forces of thought Mm -hmm. already existed in my head, like wanting to live, but being obsessed with uh, the end of living. And so it just came out. We can still dance while we die is a lyric that, Mm -hmm. you know, that I love that, you know, strikes me as important to say, what's the relationship between dancing and, and, and death? Dancing is a better way to spend the energy that's taking us toward death. In terms of sequencing, it works really well that while we die follows after to survive this. Mm -hmm. And of course, none of us are going to survive this, this thing, life. And there's that recurring emphasis, I think. There is, between those two especially. Is the sequencing important with those two being next to one another? And how how do these two songs speak to one another? Generally, I think sequencing is really important on any album. Yeah, and I I'm surprised it. that my title account is forcing me to listen to albums shuffled. It's forcing uh, you to. Well, how rude! I know. I <laughs> I just I just turned it off. I was like, why are these songs not in the right order? Yeah. And it's amazing to me that shuffles become the new norm, even on albums. And what about the art of? of album making yeah like uh, most musicians think a lot about what happens in what order yeah and i think about kendrick lamar's album there was a theory that he intended it to be played backwards his record label released it later on in reverse oh and it's fun to listen to i clearly think that the great minds of Matthew and Kendrick Lamar think alike because my strategy seems to be to start right in the middle, end of side A perhaps, and work backwards. So yeah, we're working backwards through side A. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, mix it up. And what we can hear right now is To Survive This, which is the song uh, that yeah. has Catherine Sagerman, mm-hmm. aka Lunch Thatchers, yep. uh, on it. This is definitely a favorite of mine yeah. on the record. It's really interesting that the song structure so in the final chorus Mm -hmm. does it does it go up a key it does and it's interesting lyrically you were so high on trying to find it but you led me to an empty room so i I feel like as the song kind of develops and kind of transforms it's almost like the music is like is dramatizing something of the experience that's being referred to yeah it um that's an accident as well Um, (laughs) i think most good (laughs) <laughs> good synchronicities between those things for me are accidents but yeah I can totally hear that and see how those play together and I thought a key change would just be fun and um, a challenge for me and I was sure. like how do I get there because that's a good pop <laughs> yeah Has, is it something that you've used before no I never have and it's gotten a lot of good um, feedback and there's I I still don't know how to do a key change I just <laughs> bump I think it's different. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. It's well executed. Thank you. So surviving something 
is mm -hmm. not necessary, the song is saying. Or it shouldn't be the primary focus, are we going to survive? Yeah. More so, that song is about the anxiety that we have about details of living, yeah. when in reality, we're not going to last very long in those details. Sure, yeah. It's a little cheesy, but the last line of the chorus is, and I just want to hold you. That speaks to being, you know, what people say like in the present, in yeah. the moment, and like in your body. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you could hold someone whilst you're dancing. <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah. You could, you, you could play then, both songs at once. Yeah, you could be fully <laughs> alive dancing. There's a focus on what's of value, because the lyric is, is it really so important to survive this? So the song is asking what's important, what do we value? And we value connection and even like the physical connection as well as like an emotional connection. Yeah. Other ways in which the sound of the record as a whole is informed by that kind of revaluation. Where I ended up was not obsessing about what the standard is currently for how songs should be mixed yeah. and what the song, what the sounds should be. Yeah. Um, I tried to compare as little as I could. In the in the final stage, I tried getting everything um, mastered to a similar level of clarity and volume as as pop music. But yeah. otherwise, I was trying to start from scratch on synth patches and guitar tones mm -hmm. and it ends up sounding um, a little different I think than than a typical pop song but yeah. I, I'm trying to write pop music yeah. so there's a pop sensibility it, with the key change <laughs> yeah. later, for example um, but there's a playfulness and a pl like playing outside of the conventions of, of pop I think. I'm glad like, you hear that. Yeah, like the synth patches are so fun, I think. What is so important about like the playfulness of these synth patches, for example? It's another way of dancing. Yeah. It's my way of dancing when I'm not dancing. Yeah, is, right. Is writing and recording. Specifically, writing music is long term a part of dancing mm. to that music. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen if I don't do that cerebral dance as well. Right. This, so I'm happy to do it for multiple reasons, you know? The opening line of To Survive This is Lights on, you're in a sad song. With no words to infer where it's going. So the sense of being mm. in Medeus Res, like here we are mm -hmm. in the middle of something. Mm -hmm. We're always in the middle of something. Yeah, and it's already sad. It's already, I don't, I oh. don't know if it's my, my brain, but yeah. I think there is an over, arching sense to me of sadness or of heaviness yeah, that it, a lot of people seem to be living in. And it might be yeah. because of our, uh, the state of our world, or yeah. it might be uh, the state of our species and yeah. where technology is. And in any case... Um, but you think it's specific to now? So, not, so it's not like the human experience, it's like our experience now. Our experience is, is surely unique, but the same forces are probably driving depression mm -hmm. as as have been always. Yeah. Um, both like obsession with survival mm -hmm. and therefore with money yeah. or uh, with resources. Mm -hmm. um, mental health has probably always been a thing. Yes. But our technology is different now. The song is about waking up, being in this anxious state, being in a removed from your body, removed from movement mm. state. And then taking a step back and saying, is this what's so important? Am I obsessing about the right things? When I have, for example, connections that can be built or yeah. explored or held. So speaking of connections, mm -hmm. I think it's, as you're describing the song now, I think it's particularly mm -hmm. fitting that Castro, who has a song called My Body, mm. um, that deals with some of these same issues, is yeah. is the vocalist on the song. Did Castro get assigned to this song by, by you? Or yeah, how, yeah, she did. Yeah, so how did you make that particular 
How did that pairing of this song and Catherine come back? It sounded perfect to me. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I, I actually, toward the end of writing, was imagining her singing the verse. And so I asked her and she was into it. And she's been really supportive, actually, of a few of the ideas in the album. Mm -hmm. And so it helps that she does have those similar viewpoints and can get behind it because mm. I don't know, people love that song that yeah. I've shown so far. And I think it's partly because it's congruent with her intention and personality. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. What's some overlap in your in the two of your mindsets uh, regarding like what's go what's going on with the music and mm -hmm. what mu and music in general? Mm. I'd say we're we're both analytical mm -hmm. and we're both critical mm -hmm. in our analysis mm. of of several things happening in, in society. Another song she resonates with that we talked about was I M O T M I. Yeah. And I can't speak for her, but we it seems both value clarity. Honesty, I'd say, is also a common thread in in how we approach music. Right, and being honest with oneself. I think that's how like clarity mm -hmm. relates to honesty. It's an achievement. It's difficult. It's a challenge. Yeah. To be honest with oneself. Oh yeah. Yeah. How does IMO TMI relate to some of those ideas? It's directly about that. About yeah. being honest with yourself and about being sincere. Uh, there's a line talking about learning languages when uh, even speaking to one another, it's not clear, even in the same language. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's like trying to branch out into new information, into new ways of speaking when we haven't mastered concise and real conversation. Given that concision is an important theme, mm -hmm. um, it's fun that it, you know the title is that acronym. Another funny fact about the album, mm -hmm. I was thinking about naming all of the tracks two two text acronyms together. Oh, really? And that was the only one that made it. That made yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Why did this? Why was this one the one that made it? Because that's the only one that is relevant. And yeah. Makes sense for the song. Yeah. Cut and pasted from the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm digital, unoriginal, useless information, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so those are lyrics from near the end. Can we be too concise in trying to encapsulate our experience in mm. lol, um, TMI? <laughs> That's a good um, point. Yeah? Conciseness with honesty is different though. Mm. And Stock phrases are probably not stock. what we need to turn to when we're being honest and concise at the same time. Exactly. It is a fun illustration. Yeah. Again, something I didn't think too much about that you're bringing to light which is nice sure, nice mm -hmm. it's one of the songs with the most words yeah <laughs> which is funny <laughs> dying comes up but i'm dying mm. to divide all this movement in my mind dying to divide is happens to be related to dying and while we die and to survive this mm. um i used it as an as a hyperbolic phrase okay I'm dying I, I'm dying to yeah. divide all this movement in my mind there's so much and I need to split it up and I need to like uh, process it how does the movement in the mind relate to say the beat that puts the being in my blood and the kind of cerebral dance that we were talking about with the, the synth patches and stuff yeah um, there seems to be a well-ordered movement of the mind that leads to like a well-ordered song yeah. But then most of the time, the mind isn't moving in that way. Yeah, that's, and that's tough to get through. Like when there is so much movement, that can become a barrier toward a useful flow of energy mm. that Fl can okay. take you into that creative and danceable yeah. life space. I'm glad you used that phrase, flow of energy. Mm -hmm. It seems like... In many of the songs, that's that's like a lyrical focus, and like, mm. the, and the music is intended to facilitate perhaps this achievement of flow. 
Fantastic. Is that a philosophical like concept or spiritual concept? You have That's a good important. sense. You have the a good sense of me. <laughs> it's a, it is the the flow is something I've been uh, telling people is my religion. For yeah. There's a, a book called Flow. Is, have you read it? No, I haven't. Are you, are you aware of the book? Someone someone told me about it, and that it is pretty well aligned to what yeah. I've told people about yeah. my beliefs. But flow is the flow is naturally happening okay. um, regardless of where we're at, uh, mm. whether we're in it or not. And so we're like, in the flow, we're, we're flowing along. We can be, or okay. we can be like sticking our feet in the mud, you know, right. and, and holding up. And sometimes it's important to, to slow down even within a flow that makes sense. Mm. But you're right in pegging that sense of wanting flow to be expressed in the music hmm. it's always something that i i lean on when i'm listening to like a loop that i've made mm -hmm. or um a chorus or some chunk of song if it isn't like creating a, a natural movement in me mm -hmm. it feels annoying basically i don't want to keep listening to it if it doesn't give me that feeling of flow of energy is there a song of yours on the record that uh gives you that feeling the most Probably Roland. Roland, yeah, mm -hmm. appropriately. Yeah. How does, how does Roll, the idea does of Roland, Roland yeah. relate to the idea of flowing? Roland does relate to flowing in that it has a flow and that it's about exploring that flow. The lyrics are even about exploring that flow with a person, with a mm. love interest. Mm. But that song in particular, I like to call Monago porn, and <laughs> it's a fantasy about a monogamous relationship fulfilling all of these uh, fantastical ah, ideas we have of it right. emotionally. Um, <laughs> I, I love that phrase. I hope that catches on. Monago porn? Yeah. <laughs> I hope Con it does concision. <laughs> that really, that honesty and concision. There's, uh -huh. you've got, it's much better than TMI. I tried sending it to blogs with that term and I don't think it caught on yet. So no with the song you sent? I sent the song with a, with a one-liner saying that it was monago porn and and, and you, some other things yeah. and no one i don't think i don't think the, the people are ready for <laughs> for that term <laughs> but hopefully it's some like in the context of like the the, the ideas about flow mm -hmm. and full body experience mm -hmm. and everything else we've been talking about yeah. maybe the the current viewers we're in a state of readiness to flow and roll with uh, with that idea. I think so. Yeah. I mean, in in romantic relationships, definitely, uh, people are exploring more. But even outside of that, I've been thinking a lot lately about how people seem ready to move on from feeling trapped in their situations mm. at work and mm -hmm. in relationships and in whatever. In living situations a lot of it's tied into our finances our financial system mm -hmm. but generally people are ready to flow I think okay and they're more aware that it's possible and and I'm more aware that it's possible for me and I'm trying to figure that out always yeah and I hope other people can too and if you're seeing some flow in my music, then that's yes. a great sign. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, you see, you're, it's you're, starting to happen. You're doing well. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. There is, again, this interesting emphasis on the relationship between achieving flow and roll in with it mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps shifting direction. Because I don't know mm -hmm. where we're going. There's this metaphor of like a journey mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where we're going. Always looking for your life. If you're roll in, I'm roll in. So there's a sense of being in the middle of a journey, mm -hmm. which way should we head? We want to achieve this flow, we want to roll with it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going against, I could be working against the flow. I can't decide my flow is gonna to be to go like this. Like if for whatever reason, there's something about the context. I mean, there's, there's, there are rivulets in the, the flow. The, ah. the stream can split up. It seems though that this song is suggesting that, okay, maybe, so maybe I'm a rivulet, I'm, I've been trying to go this way uh -huh. against the general flow, uh -huh. but then there is another person that could be doing that with me. This song seems to be celebrating the idea of, uh, you know, being two al aligned rivulets. 
that yeah. achieve this flowing together. A major element in Monago porn is like, I'm going to follow you wherever you go uh-huh. and it's going to be romantic and right. it's going to work. I'll be with you. Yeah. I'm going to give up my part of my direction in order to make this love yeah. still exist regardless of what it uh, cuts me off from. It's low key critical of of that element of relationships, but it, oh, it's, it's corny in the way that it does sound really nice. It sounds, yeah. it sounds super romantic to be like, let's take off, let's live in whatever space, doing whatever thing makes sense in order to make this love still happen. But it hasn't played out like that for me, you know? Right. It's, that's never worked. That's why <laughs> yeah. it's monogo porn. Yeah. Because, yeah. So, it's kind of, yeah. back to your question about um, going parallel yeah. in, in or against the flow. What I was envisioning when you were saying that, which is really confusing actually, is that for one person the flow can be one direction. Okay. And if someone else tries to go alongside them, yeah. somehow there's a current that's that could be opposite direction. Hmm. It tends to be when you try to force romantic relationships to last indefinitely, mm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So this fantasy of like, oh, I'm going to be there with you and we're going to be in sync with one another all the time, mm-hmm. like that very fantasy can lead or generally does lead to turbulence and, <laughs> yeah. and being like uh, riptides. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then someone's going to get sucked down in that. The but... ocean is in the song too. So it's interesting we're using the metaphor oh, yeah. of... Yes. Of, of water but uh, and it's not only in this song so from the ocean to the sky uh-huh. till my heart isn't mine yeah is that right? that's about dying again yeah so yeah the heart is a recurring character because mm-hmm. we're alive by virtue of the beat that puts the being in our blood yeah is the song like low-key yeah. critical of the, this kind of mono- monogamous like fantasy or is it kind of like playfully just exploring that design it's it's both it's, yeah. it's under the table very um, I don't know what you'd call it sat- satirical it's, sure it's it's critical by by being a fantasy but it is nice it's a fantasy that I have it's a fantasy that probably everyone has at some point yeah to be in love and to fulfill this um, movie quality relationship that we've been uh, grown up on it's also unrealistic, I think. Yeah. I don't know. At least to, to aspire for it without it just happening. A further extension of this water imagery that I thought was just a metaphor, like in our conversation, but is actually in, this, mm-hmm. in the song too, floating in love and denial uh, mm-hmm. seems to kind of encapsulate what you were just saying. Yeah, that's air floating, but water floating is completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there I was picturing these things blowing in the wind, the feather and the flower, and not really being the same, and not really even having any any option to be together, but mm. they are together. Oh, they, and somehow against then, the odds, they, yeah. they are. But I'm surprised that we haven't used the word love until now, uh-huh. because love is like a recurring term, and, and yeah. the song, so the record, if it's, it's saying a lot about life and death, it's definitely also saying something about love. Yeah, the op- opening track is "Power of Love" it without is. any, without any. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, why? Why without any? Is that significant? Um, is that important? If, if you've ever used Logic or sure. um, other software that gives you the option to dither, okay. there's a dithering algorithm called Power P O W R, ah. and it just gets. I see it a lot, and so it, it was in my head, and yeah. I, through the apostrophe and to make sense of it and that's the story there is of course uh, another song called The Power of Love with an E in it oh um, yeah and there's inter- so what that song is saying about the power of love what is, is that song saying uh, is uh, it's saying that you don't need a credit card mm. uh, don't need money don't need fame yeah um, those are some of the lyrics from, from the currently mm. more well known <laughs> and I only bring that up because it does seem to relate to some of the things that this record is saying about mm-hmm. life and love. So we talked about money already, and there is a song uh, called Money, 
uh -huh. uh, where the emphasis is on acknowledging or coming to realize that one is money as opposed to you know, yeah. focusing on acquiring. One is money. Or, yeah, exactly. One is money. Yeah. Your, your money. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to acquiring money, yeah. acquisition of wealth. If the famous pop song, The Power of Love, mm -hmm. is saying love it has the power to save us from capitalism, what is the power of love? Your power this of love power saying of love? about the power of the love. Power? Yeah. This song is a worship song about worship about sex. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, is, uh, so, if the song that we were just talking about is monoga porn, uh -huh. um, what type? What type of porn is this? <laughs> it's a worship uh, song. About calling sex. it sex worship sounds a little bit uh, more explicit than it is, but yeah, it, that's what it is. It's it's like taking the energy and the um, triumph from a mm. worship song, yeah. from a religious worship song, yeah. and um, flipping the focus of it from being uh, about a religious figure to being about a, a human that yeah. you might love, yeah. and how powerful that um, can be, how profound sex can be, yeah. how much of a transforming can happen in in IRL it, <laughs> IRL <laughs> as opposed to taking it out and abstracting it into a deity it's like no this is this is amazing this yeah. is our experience and to fully experience these things is powerful mm. and that's so there's That's a spirituality awesome. here mm -hmm. that relates to, that focuses on the physical um, and the physical yeah. experience. It sounds hedonist, but it's, I really believe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, this fits in with the, like, the spiritual odyssey of, like, trying to achieve mm -hmm. flow, uh, mm -hmm. trying to achieve flow with somebody else. Yeah. Um, this seems like a very fitting, like, opening to, to the record. Yeah. I don't know why it's the opening, um, but I'm glad that you think it's a fitting opening. It what? just was always, it was always track one in my head. What is, why is the opening lyric, speaking of it as like a worship song, mm -hmm. I prayed for it with misguided lips, a love that lives. Yeah, there's, um, I don't know if you've spent much time in church singing songs, but it, there are a lot of phrases yeah. in a song that are reminiscent of phrases in worship songs sure. at church. Um, there's, there's, in particular, in this line, this love that lives, like a, like a living, like the living uh, spirit or mm. word or whatever people might say. Mm -hmm. um, it just struck me as funny that in these songs, people are are emphasizing the living nature of a deity when we have living beings already right. <laughs> that are definitely living that we don't attribute the same value to. Mm. Is the opening idea that, we, yes, it is right to value the living love, Mm -hmm. but we're looking for it in all the wrong places. It's right, it's actually closer to us than it's right here. Yeah, it's it's in your life. Yeah. It's like the, the life is in your life and there's not much more digging you have to do. Yeah. It's just perspective shifting. Sex is interesting because it's like, there is so much sex in mm -hmm. uh, conversation, in art, in, mm -hmm. um, even in the news in terrible ways recently. But still, it's removed. It's like, it can't be a, a celebration in like a wholesome way. It's not being treated as highly as it could be as a spiritual experience. Yeah, so some core differences between your dithery power of love and the pop power of love yeah. seem to be that this is there's more reverence yeah. um, you're going to focus more on the physical aspect and the messiness too mm -hmm. the power of love in the pop song 
it's going to get everything sorted for you. You just need this, and you'll and you'll be done. Uh, whereas here, fucked the fuck up on the power of love uh -huh. uh, is a very different emphasis. I think yeah. this is there's an acknowledgement of like the messiness. This isn't the power that we can wield, uh -huh. and we we might lose things if yeah. we try to go with the flow of this power. We might lose parts of ourselves. Yeah, totally. In that line. I'm visualizing more of a, a drugged out on it yeah. feel. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily messed up, fucked up, but yeah. just lost in it. Yeah. That's, and that is messy. It's definitely not like everything is going to be all right because of a relationship. I'm, yeah. I'm not a, an advocate of that yeah, exactly, yeah. mindset. But. Yeah, there's a lot more nuance and depth to what this song is saying about mm -hmm the actual power of actual love mm -hmm. than the famous song. Uh -huh. <laughs> well done, I prefer yours. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, you. <laughs> uh, which ends, no sin, no heaven, no regret, mm -hmm. just thankfulness to think we lived for a moment in this mess mm -hmm. and made so much sense. Mm -hmm. So we began by talking about like the individual's existential quests of sorts mm -hmm. to achieve flow mm -hmm. and, to, and to get this clarity and then in our conversation like the focus on like well it would be lovely if someone else was trying to do that and we were doing so together and mm -hmm. then that did solve everything mm -hmm. but most of these songs seem to be stepping back from that like lovely idea mm -hmm. and thinking about how life is different from that while still like seeing value in that as, yeah. as something to strive for. Yeah, I I love that. I, <laughs> I am always trying to be realistic uh, without losing touch with yeah. the magic. Acknowledging the, the value of sequencing, we're going to close with the final three songs. Your Money, mm -hmm. Lucky Me, Lucky Mud, and then Forever with two Fs. So who were the collaborators with these songs? Money features first Jenny Lawless, yeah, who currently plays with the live band. Oh, um, great! And she sings the verses, and then there's there's also a little um, background vocal emphasis and a solo from Siri Yunlin. Yeah, and AKA Humbird. Humbird, yeah. yeah. Who wrote a an amazing review of the album on her her blog which is fairly new mm -hmm. it's called the moon spoon N not coincidentally all people who are money uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah so uh, to encapsulate like the ethos of this song in, in, mm -hmm. in the lyric uh, you get me higher when you touch me than you could with your green green the green green is just money and the point is if you don't have money it's not like I don't value you. Yeah. And in fact, it's more value to have someone valuable in your life than if they're able to, you know, go do fancy dinner with you every night. Yeah, exactly. Which don't, I love. But. Yeah. Oh dear, fancy <laughs> dinner's nice. Don't need a credit card again. That's the power of love. Even if they have a sense of what's valuable, Yeah. I've known people to, to associate their lack of money or resources or power with failure failure in yeah. life with with low confidence with um low self-esteem and avail an availability to love yeah i must be doing something wrong look at the state i'm in kind yeah of thing. yeah and so yeah that's that's the real money though is is in what people have yeah, uh, outside of money. The true currency. Mm -hmm. I think there's even a lyric about that. Our currency. They're all looking for somebody to gain, but our currency is a tender exchange. Yeah, there <laughs> are a lot of lots, puns. Of, <laughs> lots of good puns <laughs> in that one line. Yeah, so many. Actually, Larry Wish, Adam. Yeah, who used to live here in the oh, duplex. Really? Uh, many Larry Wish records were made in this room. <laughs> well, <laughs> Adam invited us to record at. Um, Minnehaha recording company, recording company. Where, where back to the city sessions are done oh cool yeah where lunch that just was yesterday awesome putting it all together yeah <laughs> 
So he invited us to record a track because he was interning at that time at the studio as an engineer. Yeah. And we came into the studio kind of half prepared and Siri was there. Siri Adlin Humbert, who has done a Back to the City session at the Minnehaha Recording Company. As we're talking about it. Yeah, so plug it. Here, here is Siri. Here's Humbert performing between us as we talk about well, the Minnehaha Recording Company. Nice. Siri helped a lot to write those silly puns. We were sitting on the couch there and and it was a silly set of lyrics and I tweaked them and eventually they ended up how they are and there are still some silly puns. Again with the importance of sequencing Lucky Me Lucky Mud, mm -hmm. it's interesting that that comes up after a song which is effectively saying well you might it might seem like everything is wrong like you're in a bad situation mm -hmm. but really you're doing you're doing fine in fact mm -hmm. you're doing great this sounds more morose mm -hmm. uh we're uh, like we're stuck in the mud mm -hmm. um to some extent what's happening with this song so this song was completely inspired by uh just the title which is from a kurt vonnegut book it's from oh. cat's cradle okay it's, uh i don't know if the name of the song or there's a, a rhyme in the book that is um, about basically gratefulness for living hmm. and um, this uh, religious figure in the book named Bokanan, I think, mm -hmm. um, writes these, uh, I forgot the name of what type of rhyme they are, but basically they're like the religious text, but they're little sing-songy um, phrases or passages that he has. Okay. And so Lucky Me Lucky Mutts from that it is basically um, about feeling hopeless and hoping to overcome that hopelessness. Yeah. It's um, it's a little bit of an exploration of um, not to play this off lightly but all the the songs about suicide that yeah. exist from like the early 2000s, all these like yeah. uh, rock bands that I might have listened to uh, that were largely writing songs about being depressed and about yeah. suicide. So what kinds of bands or songs are you imagining? Papa Roach. Oh, um, sure. Linkin Park, unfortunately. Cut my life into um, pieces, this is my last yeah. resort. Yeah, definitely, yeah. like their biggest banger about, about self-harm. Yeah. and all over the place, like Stained, Creed, mm. like all about yeah. depression and and uh, I'm, I again may have listened to that music when I was a teen and yeah. This I, is a response to that? Yeah, focus. I think it's it's coming out in a way that feels sincere but is, is real. It's yeah. like they, they were popular songs because they resonated because people tend to be depressed when they're alone in their heads, you know? Yeah. So this song is just like, I hope it's it's not too much to bear. Yeah, and, absolutely, yeah. The, and it's hopeful. The other lyric besides the title in the chorus is, mm -hmm. I hope to live to say, another important thing to say, I never gave up. Oh, lucky me, lucky mud. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a nice flow from that song into the two Fs forever. <laughs> this idea of alignment with oneself with one's best self mm -hmm. uh, and being remaining together with that. Then we return at the end with forever to, again, a statement about what to say or not to say. Mm -hmm. Don't say you love me. I know by now and f forever. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> the, the sense of forever in this song uh, ends up at we're always going to be forever getting to know each other mm. and um, and always separate. Hmm. Um, the it's it's almost running parallel to Roland, but in kind of a darker, more uh, morose yeah. uh, mindset. So if Rolling is the monogamy porn, uh -huh. uh, where we acknowledge it, there's a kind of fantasy here. Yeah. Like now, it's exploring. Okay, what with the rea a reality. Uh -huh. where something like that is achieved and sustained, what does that actually involve? Yeah, I guess so. 
I guess that is the reality. It's like the Monago sad indie film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not as fun to watch, honestly. Yeah. And it, but I that, love the song. This song is specifically about growing in relationships that are non-monogamous mm. Um, mm. and feeling a sense of anxiety or uh, a fleeting feeling of love yeah or a paranoia about love being fleeting yeah um so it's sensing like the realness of the connection of the love the true currency is is tended but there's a lack of um you know, this isn't someone who, who is labeled as one significant mm-hmm. other. So dealing with like the nuance and the challenge of like getting that right. Yeah, and the day to day fluctuation of time spent. Yeah, and the strength of emotion and passion. Sometimes yeah. these things in any relationship will wax and wane, and in in relationships where they're not designated as mm. consistent life partners. Like this is my person. Yeah. Obviously, there's something. Um, I sense like the critique of the idea of this being my person like consistently uh-huh. throughout the record. Yeah, of and this is maybe flipping that and being like, but it is hard, you know? Yeah. It is hard to feel strength and confidence in yourself as an independent being. It ends up at a, a moment of peace and an understanding of like the forever search for, yeah. for these things, for each other, and for um, our our end, our uh, I mean, literally the end of our our life. Um, it's always a question, mm-hmm. and it's always like, where are we going to be? Where are we going to end up? Um, the entangled vines was another sense of like we're separate, but we are interacting. Yeah. We're um, maybe entangled for a moment like the regular spreading yeah yeah and it moves from anxiety and uh, misunderstanding to peace yeah. and understanding secretly maybe this is another like kendrick backwards album uh, <laughs> because we because we begin with the anxiety in forever of like, yeah. oh but what if what if this is impossible uh, mm. and then we work our way to the beginning power of love where there's yeah. a celebration <laughs> yeah, I should try. I should try it. Yeah, it's funny. Like all these, all these insights you're finding. I feel like we're working through my psyche as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on a journey, backwards journey. Like normally, I'm just kind of like holed up writing on this, uh, writing music and recording on my computer. Yeah, and then talking and about it. Back it's just like this is what you do. This is what I think. This yeah. is how I feel. Yeah. I did say this word like <laughs> 10 times. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. Thank you for all the the attention to detail. You're very welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you, Matthew, for, for joining me. Yeah. And uh, thank you, uh, viewers, for flowing down the stream with us all the way to, <laughs> to, the, to the ocean. Yeah. The ocean that is We're the there. return to real life. Uh, don't forget to dance uh, while you die. <laughs> <laughs> that's important um, don't forget to tell people that they're on your, your mind those are some, some of the morals of the story yeah. that we've been telling today um, so yeah I've, this is Back to the City I'm Simon Calder uh, thank you for tuning in will there be a performance by people in the, on the horizon? There, there will if you happen to be in Eau Claire for the Eau Claire's Festival you might want to come a day early and Ooh. check us out at Preclairs. Pre, oh, nice! Mm-hmm, at the Metro, the nicely named Preclairs. Mm-hmm, yeah. Nicely, yeah. <laughs> as as nicely named as the the full festival. Yeah. <laughs> and then in town, or in Saint Paul, we have a show at the Turf Club on July twenty fifth. So who's with you on that bill? We're going to be playing with We Are the Willows and Moon. Yeah. And here is the information. Uh, we will be, we'll, let's go to the turf and dance together. Yeah, sounds great. See you there. See you there.